Starry Night is one of the most famous pieces of art in the entire world, and I'm about to build it in Minecraft. And I don't just mean pixel art. I want this to be a perfect 3D replica. Where do I even start with this? I was lost, but then it hit me. In order to beat Van Gogh at his own game, I had to become Van Gogh. So I dressed like Van Gogh, ate like Van Gogh, I even cut off my... On top of all of that, I hand painted all of my plans for the entire build. This is gonna make things so much harder, isn't it? The question had to be answered. How close could I actually get to the original painting? I think it's worth noting the last time I did something like this, people literally thought it was fake. Okay, everything starts with these mountains. The mountains were going to determine the placement of everything. This definitely stressed me out. What if I couldn't match the original shapes? Or I made them too big? I think I actually did make them too big, but that's probably just going to make things more insane later in this video. I created huge shapes that form the silhouettes in the original painting, spacing them apart from each other to make an actual mountain range. The plans were a bit more tricky because Van Gogh covered the entire landscape in trees. The only thing I had to go off of were these tiny dips and rises in the distance. Okay, so you see all of these paint strokes? I'm gonna have to make all of them. Little did I know this was just the beginning when it came to painting the entire map. This is where I ran into my first problem. I had to figure out how I was going to match the colors exactly to Starry Night. I actually tried to eyeball it thinking it wouldn't be too complicated, but I failed every single time. This pixel art generator that I wanted to use to see what Minecraft blocks make the perfect matching colors is only working for 1.12. That's a five-year-old version of Minecraft with way less blocks in it. That means that I couldn't use the newest blocks to make the most accurate colors. So I literally had my friend rewrite the entire program using the newest blocks. Because everything had to be perfect if I was going to pull this off. With my new pixelated image, I painted the mountains, making them flow with the colors. It eventually got to the point where I was starting to see something that looked like the painting. Everything I just did up there, I now have to do over 60 chunks of terrain. Oh my god. <sighs> Little did I know this was just the beginning, because everything after this point was going to get exponentially harder. But remember my goal. I wanted this replica to be exact, and nothing was going to get in my way. Starting with this black blob. I mean, look at this thing. What even is this? I just realized to match the shape of this thing, I'm gonna have to build it block for block. So that's what I did. Over the course of two days, I perfectly replicated what I'm now thinking is a tree, and then colored it in. Based on my tree hypothesis, this is actually the only part of the build where I didn't reference the pixelated image. The dark green in the original painting translated to just straight black, and I don't think I've ever seen a black tree. Now that I had a reference point in the landscape, I could face what I thought would be the hardest part of this entire build. The trees. When you look closer, you begin to realize just how many trees there actually are. So far, I've counted 92 trees. I have to individually color every single one to make them match up exactly with this painting. And I ended up doing this twice. You see, this is where things get complicated. How do you make a tree look like paint while still looking like a tree? Eventually, I used glass, making everything look fluffy but colorful. Not to mention every single tree lines up with the painting. I feel like this doesn't look right. It's the only giant tree in the entire build. I actually ended up making more of these big trees so everything felt natural and I could have a beautiful landscape full of colors. It seemed to be smooth sailing. I'd figured out how to replicate Van Gogh's original colors, turn trees into paintings, and basically make everything look like it was made out of paint. Little did I know this was just the beginning. Remember how I said things would get exponentially harder? I just tried to look up how many houses are in Starry Night's town, and it says that the town doesn't even freaking exist. I genuinely thought this was a real place. Was Van Gogh lying? Was he trying to trick me? I may never know. Basically, this meant that I had to rely on my awful painting to try and decipher where any of these buildings actually were. Every single house I'm making 3D is turning into the weirdest shapes. I began to think to myself, maybe some things just weren't meant to be 3D. Maybe this wasn't possible. But then I remembered Vincent. Look at him. So sad, stuck in the second dimension. I couldn't just give up on him, so I pushed on. Mapping the town out seemed to be only half of my problem, because when I started to look closer at the colors, they were the most complex out of anything in the entire painting. The sheer amount of blocks that some of these houses are made of is just insane. How am I gonna do this? Turns out the answer to my question was spending three whole days texturing each building by hand and matching every single brushstroke Van Gogh made so that the town could be as accurate as possible. It's finally time for the centerpiece of this entire painting. 
the Starry Night. Now that I'm looking at the build, I'm realizing how massive I'm gonna have to make all of this. How was I going to fill an entire sky with Van Gogh's brushstrokes? I needed answers. I looked out into the night sky to see the stars, desperate for any kind of real inspiration, but I couldn't see anything. I just somehow see what Van Gogh saw on that night, and I don't think this is gonna cut it. I had to feel like I was really there, so I did the only thing I could. I went to see Starry Night. Technically, it was just an exhibit. I finally understood what it would be like to stand inside Starry Night. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was surrounded by Van Gogh's work. When I came back, I mapped everything out, every star position, every swirl to create the perfect night sky. Everything I've done has helped me prepare for this final task. The color program, the vantage points, my obsession with Van Gogh. I started the swirl first. I tried to be so exact with the colors that I found myself recreating almost every stroke. I began to realize that this was it. This was the final stage of my transformation. After everything, I truly was becoming Van Gogh. I was painting the sky with the same strokes as him. Even the tools I was using were called brushes. Everything felt so right. This is the most satisfying thing I've ever built. I literally feel like a painter right now. But this was just the beginning. Because I wasn't just building the stars. I was building everything in between the stars. Every single stroke that made up the entire background of the sky. I had to somehow make all of this line up so that when you stood in the exact position, everything fit perfectly into place. The only way I can line this up is by flying back and forth over and over again. And the more I filled in, the more I realized how everything started to slowly curve inward to a single point that Starry Night was painted from. And I didn't even mean for this to happen. It's so weird what happens when you make something like this 3D. There was still one last part of the night sky to fill in. Even after everything I had done to get this far, Van Gogh still had one trick up his sleeve. One detail that had flew under my radar. All this time I thought these were supposed to be more stars in the background. Apparently it's a sunrise? Oh my god, not only was it a sunrise painting, it was painted from memory during the day. Starry Night wasn't even painted at night. How can you even call a painting a Starry Night if it's not even at night? But it was vincentvangogh.org, the official website, confirmed. Was everything I had done wrong? Did I misinterpret his work thus making my build an inaccurate recreation? A failed replica? Well, the sun is technically a star, so I guess I'll go with that. Once the glowing halo of Van Gogh's rising sun was built off in the distance, it was done. I had built everything inside Starry Night down to the final detail. The mountains, the town, the stars, and their exact alignment, it was all complete. A month's worth of work was all leading up to this moment. I had set out on this journey to answer one question. How close could I really get to Van Gogh's masterpiece? Before I show you the final result, let's see how my friends react. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, initially I actually cannot tell the difference. Are those all blocks? It's actually like really, really similar. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> this is 3D. Wow. wow. You, got, you got the brush strokes down. <laughs> Dude, that's actually really impressive. Wow. Look at this shit, bro. Looks like Whoville. Whoville? Whoville. Okay, because like all of this is just blocks. Whoville's like, from the Grinch. Yeah, Whoville's from the Grinch, but the Mona Lisa when she drew huh? it, or whoever drew it. This is it, the final comparison. I genuinely have no clue how I was able to pull this off. Subscribe.